The Trek Marlin series. It's a line of bikes that for many big box owners becomes an entry point into local bike shop products. And last year I looked at the Marlin 5, 6, and 7 and a lot of people found that helpful. Well the 2020 Marlins are out, though they're kind of hard to get at the moment, but I was able to get my hands on a new Marlin 6. And for 2021, get different colors. There's an alpine blue or this radioactive red. Most of the components are going to be carryovers. I would say about 95%, but there are a few changes like origins where the bike's made. The 2020 I looked at, made in China. This one, Cambodia. And the handlebars, they're Bontrager alloy, 31.8 millimeter diameter with a 5 millimeter rise. And I could be wrong, but I remember the 2020 bars having less back sweep. And to me, these just sort of look flatter, but the width, 720 millimeters, and that's for all but the smallest frame, which is 690. All the Marlins have blender compatible Bontrager stems, but the length varies from 50 millimeters to 90 millimeters depending upon the frame size. For this medium frame, it's 70 millimeters. Headset, that's a 1 and 1 8 inch semi integrated, which for this bike means a non tapered head tube. And who would have thought that going into 2021 that Schwinn would have $200 bikes with a taper, but this $670 Marlin does not? Which of course means a straight steerer fork, and just like last year, the 6 is equipped with an SR Suntour XCT30 coil spring fork, and it comes equipped with a preload adjustment, a manual lockout, and 100 millimeters of travel. Now, there's nothing wrong with the XCT, but we're starting to see equal caliber forks on roughly $500 bikes now, so I think Trek may need to soon step this up. The front wheel has a standard quick release with 100 millimeters of spacing, and the front hub a Formula DC20. For grips, Bontrager XR Endurance Comp Lock-Ons, which is a long name for some basic rubber comfort-esque grips, and they're black for this red model. For shifting, Shimano Altus trigger shifters, an 8-speed on the right, 2-speed on the left. Brakes, at least for this size frame, Tektro HDM 275 hydraulics, and I think these are the same that were on the 2020. And now we get to a difference that I find kind of weird, or at the least curious, and that's with the wheels, or more specifically the tires. The wheels themselves are the same 29-inch Bontrager connection rims, 32-hole with Schrader valves, same stuff as last year. But the tires. These were listed on the Trek side as Bontrager XR2s 29 by 2.20, and that's the size that are on this bike, but I noticed that these are Kenda. Curious because Trek owns Bontrager, so why use Kendas, and not just any Kendas, these look like licensed big box Kendas, they even smell funny. And you know what I'm talking about, that cheap tire smell, well these have that. Now that may be a step back, but the frame, it's all Trek. By that I mean the expected good quality and nice features like internal cable routing and a beautiful finish. I think Trek does among the best finishes in all bike dome. But wait just a second because something looks familiar here. A wide but thin top tube, a square down tube, an ever so slightly curved seat tube. You know, outside of this shark fin reinforcement, this kind of reminds me of the new Schwinn boundary frame. Do you see that too? Of course credit where credit is due, the welds are all excellent as I would expect from Trek and this is silver alpha aluminum so a good balance between weight and strength and by the way the weight of this bike 32 pounds. Of course the boundary frame doesn't have this internal cable routing or some of the other nice Trek touches like the factory chainstay protector and it wouldn't be a Marlin without the covertly applied bike riding Marlin dude. All in all, head tube aside, by the way 69.5 degree head tube angle, I would say it's a worthy Marlin frame. What about the drivetrain? Well, it kicks off with generic polymer pedals. Now, Trek has some nice Bontrager pedals that I'm sure they'd be more than happy to sell you. The rest of the drivetrain, as far as I can tell, unchanged from last year, and all Shimano, including the crank set with its 36 and 22 tooth chain rings and 170 millimeter crank arms on this model, 175 on the larger models. And the hyperdrive setup, that's a Shimano Altus derailleur up front. By the way, this is a 73 millimeter cartridge bottom bracket. An Altus derailleur at the rear and eight speeds at the rear, and that's from Shimano Mega Drive, a Hyperglide cassette. Cassette, not free will, and that's made into a Formula DC 22 rear hub. The rear wheel also quick release with 135 millimeter spacing. And these Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, the rotors 160 millimeters front and rear. I expected 180 up front, but apparently they're both 160. I'm not sure if I read that somewhere, if I just had it wrong all along, but 160 front and rear. And I don't think I showed this when I was talking about the frame, but it has rack mounts and that makes this a good dual use bike. The seat post for this medium frame is a 31.6mm alloy post with a 12mm offset and 330mm of length. 
And capping everything off, a Bontrager Arvada saddle, and the specs say this is 138 millimeters wide, so stats. Seriously though, it's a nice looking saddle, and I think the same can be said for the bike as a whole. But my opinion is that Trek may be letting the Marlin, at least this Marlin 6, get a bit long in the tooth, because there is increasingly competitive competition, even from some big box bikes, but overall, this is still a good bike. And remember, part of that one penny away from $670 price is professional dealer setup and service, and that's a big deal. And I always say, if you can afford local bike shop prices, at least go to your local bike shop and look around. You might end up leaving with a new Trek Marlin 6. As far as this 6 goes, what do you think? Is this too much of the same, or is it still a good bike? And are some big box bikes, think Axum, possibly giving it a run for its money? Comment below and let me hear your thoughts. Also, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you do so. And make sure you have that notification bell active. And thanks for watching Kev Central. Have a great day.